I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. There's a story out of California today that goes right to the heart of a topic that is both conflictive and or confusing for many Americans. According to a new California law that Governor Gavin Newsom just signed over the weekend, prisoners in that state can now be housed not in accordance with the gender assigned to them at birth, but rather the gender with which they identify. RT correspondent Natasha Sweet tells us more about the law and the stir that it's causing. The Transgender Respect Agency and Dignity Act was signed into law by California Governor Gavin Newsom over the weekend. According to the bill's author, State Senator Scott Weiner of San Francisco, trans women in particular are at such extreme risk of brutalization in men's facilities. We need to treat them with the basic respect and dignity that they deserve. The bill cites a study which reveals those who are born male but say they identify as women are 13 times more likely to be victims of sexual abuse while incarcerated compared to other male inmates. According to the new law, officers are to ask inmates privately how they personally identify. They can then request to be placed in an all men's or women's prison. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation cannot reportedly deny a request as a result of one's anatomy, sexual orientation, or, quote, factor present. However, if there are security concerns, the state can deny the request. Those against the law say it does nothing to protect women. While the initial bill cites the vulnerability of those who are transgender, opposers say it fails to mention the risk of incarcerated women facing violence from males. And there is no data revealing if transgender males pose any less of a threat. Abigail Lunetta, a self-proclaimed Democrat, feminist, and advocate for women's rights, opposed the bill, citing a current case. She says right now Richard Masbrock, a transgender male, is currently housed with female inmates in Corona, even though he is serving time for targeting, raping, and torturing women. Under no circumstances is this morally justifiable. Court documents reveal Massbrook violently raped a woman with her mother present after brandishing a firearm. Natasha Chart, organizer of Women's Liberation Front, says Massbrook is still a dangerous person and should not be housed with women. Because he's just a man who's been put in a women's prison who's dangerous and entitled and has no sense of boundaries with others. In 2018, Connecticut passed a similar law. New York City, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island have all housed inmates according to their gender identity. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, 
apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. This is Nagorno-Karabakh's deadly new war, filmed by news site Hedka.am on the Armenian front lines. You can hear the sound of a drone. Soldiers desperately try to shoot it down. Armenian forces have dug in, but Azerbaijan says this war will end only with the return of the disputed territory. The cost of that war so far, the numbers of Azeri dead and wounded, is a secret known only to the Azeri leadership. We have only one condition. Armenia must leave our lands. If the Armenian government complies with this agreement, the fighting will stop. There will be no bloodshed, there will be peace. Peace will come to our region. These images show what Armenia's defense ministry claims is one of its fighter aircraft shot down by a Turkish F-16 over Armenian airspace. On Wednesday, Armenia went even further. It accused Turkey of actually controlling aerial combat operations, a charge Azerbaijan and Turkey both strenuously deny. But Turkey certainly gives moral support to what it sees as its Turkish-speaking brother-in-arms. That is a dangerous game says President Emmanuel Macron of France, another mediator between the two sides. At this stage, I remain extremely cautious, but we know it's an extremely volatile situation. That said, I have noted Turkey's political declarations in favor of Azerbaijan, which I think are inconsiderate and dangerous. France, as part of the Minsk group, which requires the impartiality, which explains my caution, remains extremely concerned by the warlike messages coming from Turkey in the last few hours, which essentially remove any of Azerbaijan's inhibitions in reconquering Nagorno-Karabakh, and that we won't accept. In Baku, more men gather outside conscription offices to sign up for battle. No, there is no fear. Our country needs us. We'll go as far as necessary for our country. Many of these reservists weren't even born when Azerbaijan lost Karabakh to Armenian separatists in the 1990s. Now they're on their way to fight for a land Armenians and Azeris hold dear. We were waiting for this day. I hope we'll liberate Karabakh. I hope all our soldiers return safely. These are the hellish conditions they will face on the front. High-tech heavy weaponry with old-fashioned trench warfare. That shows no sign of relenting. This is video from the Chinese military showing a simulated attack on America's Air Force base on the island of Guam. Meanwhile, during a simulated attack on a Pacific island this week, U.S. military personnel wore this patch on their uniforms, showing a drone over China. The war drums in the Pacific are building. With the U.S. standing up to Chinese expansionism in the South China Sea, and fighting back against China's attack on the American economy and its security, it's raised fears the two nations could be headed for a military showdown. Some say China has sought to dominate an economically weak post-COVID-19 world through increasingly aggressive behavior. 20 Indian soldiers were killed this summer in a surprise cross-border attack by the Chinese army. China has clashed with its neighbors in the South China Sea by claiming most of it for itself. And there are fears of war between China and Taiwan. China has been looting the U.S. of intellectual property and military secrets on a colossal scale. FBI point. Director Christopher Wray says his bureau is opening a new Chinese espionage case every 10 hours. The greatest external threat that the United States faces over the medium and long term is the threat by the regime in China today, the Chinese Communist Party, led by General Secretary Xi Jinping. And Secretary of State Pompeo says China is set on world domination. 
but he says the Trump administration is determined to stop it. I want to start today with a video of the Kavkaz 2020 joint military exercises being held in southern Russia. There they are. Exercises. They lasted about a full week, included a host of cooperating countries. Listen to this list Iran, Armenia, Belarus, China, Myanmar, Pakistan, Azerbaijan, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Sri Lanka, even India, who, as I mentioned, only backed out at the last minute because of some COVID 19 issues. From maritime drills at Russia's doorstep to ships patrolling the South China Sea. The U.S. Navy has spread out around the world. Here's U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper. Not only is this region important because it is a hub of global trade and commerce, it is also the epicenter of great power competition with China. And in the face of destabilizing activities from the PLA, particularly in the maritime domain, the United States must be ready to deter conflict and, if necessary, fight and win at sea. A conflict that Esper may be alluding to could be tied to a dispute in the South China Sea, where currently China, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Brunei all have overlapping territorial claims. While the countries involved have managed to move forward with the disagreement peacefully, the U.S. has stirred the pot in the region both through rhetoric and military patrols under the guise of freedom of navigation. Thousands of miles away, the U.S. is also pushing buttons in the Black Sea in Russia's neck of the woods. In July, Russia intercepted an American reconnaissance flight over the Black Sea, and the U.S. held military drills in the same area over the summer. And then, of course, there's Iran. Just last week, a U.S. aircraft carrier and several other warships passed along Iran's coast through the Strait of Hormuz in what the U.S. Navy describes as a scheduled maneuver. From the global economy to troubled waters, it is clear that China, Russia, and Iran are all being targeted by the U.S. However, that doesn't mean those countries aren't preparing to counter any attacks. This week, Russia concluded joint military drills in the Black and Caspian Seas, which included troops from Iran and China, as well as Armenia, Belarus, Myanmar, and Pakistan. Approximately 80,000 personnel participated in the drills, known as Kavkaz 2020. With common defense goals and the U.S. presence in their backyards, these joint exercises have become a staple for many of the nations involved. Chinese Army units regularly join us in our military drills and war games. As for other, more distant countries, I don't believe that distance matters that much nowadays, given all the transportation options and ways to deploy troops over long-haul routes. While many may deem U.S. naval behavior as threatening, it seems that America will not be backing down anytime soon. According to the U.S. Defense Secretary, he plans to expand the U.S. Navy's military might by adding both manned and unmanned surface and submarine craft to the naval fleet, while further exploring the use of artificial intelligence in warfare. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God 
And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. This rise of gun violence in New York City is clearly evident in the latest NYPD statistics. A total of 713 people shot this time last year. And during the same period this year, more than 1,400 people have been shot. That is a 98% increase. The number of shooting incidents has also increased by 91%. There were 603 through the end of September last year, compared to more than 1,100 hundred this year. This woman was on her way to her very first sonogram and she never returned. Now, weeks after she went missing, the body of the missing pregnant woman has been found in a ravine. And as Jim Murray reports, her ex-boyfriend has been arrested and charged with her murder. 33-year-old Cassandra Cantrell was at the tail end of her first trimester. She was going to have a baby shower on Halloween. <laughs> In this happy time of her life, Cassandra made the appointment for a sonogram. She was especially curious to see if the sonogram showed twins, because twins run in her family. In fact, Cassandra was a twin herself. But when she didn't show up for the doctor's appointment, her mom started to worry and called police. Four weeks later, the family's worst fears came to be. Cassandra's remains were found in a wooded ravine near Tacoma, Washington. Suspicion quickly pointed to Cassandra's ex-boyfriend, Colin Dudley, who was living with another woman. Dudley, a chef, has pled not guilty to murder. Court documents allege he did not want children. Cassandra's devastated mom told Inside Edition, Dudley was a troubled man. He said if any girl ever told him that he'd gotten her pregnant, he'd steal the baby and she'd never see it again and he'd raise it to hate women. It's almost impossible to believe, but homicide is the leading cause of death among pregnant women. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. You've seen it in action movies, guys pulling out guns during car chases and shooting right through the windshield. Well, this was not something out of Hollywood. This guy says he was defending himself during a pretty intense road rage incident. How crazy is this? A motorist zips down a Florida highway while shooting through his windshield. Shards of glass fly as his passenger freaks out. The shooter, identified as Marco Mazetta, says he was defending himself in a wild case of road rage. Moments earlier, he says he brake checked another driver in a Nissan he thought was tailgating him, causing the other driver to bump him from behind. The Nissan then speeds around Mazetta's truck. And when you blow up the video, it looks like he has a gun. Mazetta then pulls his gun from his waistband and starts shooting. The whole incident lasts about eight minutes before the Nissan drives off. Mazetta says after the incident, he pulled over and called police. No charges have been filed. We're going to turn now to breaking news from Southern California. Remember that brutal ambush shooting of two sheriff's deputies that was all caught on surveillance video? Well, charges have been filed. And get this, the suspect was already in custody. Here's CBS's Carter Evans. Tonight, police say the intense manhunt for the gunman who ambushed two L.A. County sheriff's deputies is over. This morning, my office filed attempted murder charges against Deontay Lee Murray. But Murray was arrested two weeks ago after a carjacking and an hours-long standoff. Investigators say a handgun he tossed during that chase was a key piece of evidence. That was pretty powerful when, when the gun was thrown from the car and we knew it was a 40, 40 caliber. But at the time, officials were adamant the cases were unrelated. It seems deliberately misleading when you strongly suspected going into it 
that this may have been the guy, but you definitively said he wasn't. We're not going to tell you all of our suspicions because you don't give away the store. Dramatic video shows the wounded female deputy applying a tourniquet to help save her partner. Investigators believe Murray acted alone, but they're unclear about his motive. Other than the fact that he obviously hates policemen and he wants them dead. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Other news today, it was a shocking death. A photographer taking students' senior photos killed when two teenagers rolled a log off a cliff above her. Now both of those teens have appeared in court saying, yes, they are guilty. Stephen Fabian has details. This teenager is now admitting he pushed a log off a cliff, killing a mom as she stood below. Now he's asking for forgiveness from the dead woman's family. I hope that someday you will find it in your heart to forgive me. The tragedy happened when professional photographer Victoria Schaefer was taking pictures of high school seniors in this beautiful Ohio State Park on Labor Day last year. The group was following along this trail back to the parking lot when out of nowhere a 70 plus pound log came crashing down from above, crushing the photographer. The students and other people nearby called 911, but her injuries were far too severe. I see my phone her. Slow down. I can't understand you. What happened? A tree branch fell on her. She's not moving. She got her head like smashed in the log. I think she's dead. There's, there's no calls. The mother of four was pronounced dead at the scene. The log hit her with such force it broke her camera. Two teens have been charged in the crime. 17 year old Jordan Buckley walked into court with his family and pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter. How do you plead? I plead guilty, guys. Buckley then stood up, turned, and addressed Victoria's family, including her husband Fritz. I understand that my actions that day has caused your family's life to change. And my hope from all of this is to use this trauma to learn and live the rest of my life in a way that will honor the shapers. A second teenager, Jaden Churches, has pled guilty to the same charge. They are due to be sentenced next month. Forgiveness is an essential part of the life of believers, as we read in Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. God promises that when we come to Him confessing our sin and asking for forgiveness, He freely grants it, as we read in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Likewise, the forgiveness we extend to others should know no limits, as we read in Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. 
Why do we forgive? Because we have been forgiven. Psalm 917 The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Hillsides, vineyards, and neighborhoods, all igniting with terrifying speed. What we made here is gone. Overnight, fires exploding in multiple directions across Napa and Sonoma County, now threatening more than 22,000 structures. It was within five minutes, the entire side of the hill was on fire. Veteran firefighters say few people understand how quickly fires can spread, often a deadly mistake. It'll throw an ember out or um, something that's hot up to a mile, maybe two miles out ahead of the main front of the fire. And the next thing you know, you're trapped between the new spot fire that just started and the main front of the fire. When flames tore through this area, little could be done to stop it. Multi-million dollar homes and smaller properties are a total loss. Across the region, hundreds of homes have burned, and so is this Christian elementary school in St. Helena, where Mangina Velasquez works. Oh, how sad. This is the preschool playground where the kids were running and playing. It's all gone. It's burned. World-renowned restaurants and wineries have also been destroyed or damaged trying to rinse off any dirt or ash that's on the grapes. Todd Heth is the winemaker at Fairwinds Estate, which now looks like this. We're disappointed and gutted and, you know, it's, it's a tragedy. But during the harvest, there's no time to reflect on the disaster. A fellow winemaker offered up his facilities so Heth can crush and salvage what he can of his crop. Um, this has really burned right across the valley, so it's really kind of a a scar on the valley, but I know that we'll come out of it. I know that things will, will bloom again. This morning, hope for renewal in a beloved part of California still under siege. To give you a bit more perspective, over the summer there's been 44,000 wildfires across the West that have eaten up more than 7.1 million acres. But firefighters say they take each blaze one at a time in what feels like an endless fight. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Just a day after a contentious presidential debate, U.S. President Donald Trump attempted to distance himself from a group many consider to be a white supremacist organization. I don't know who the Proud Boys are. I mean, you have to give me a definition because I really don't know who they are. I can only say they have to stand down, let law enforcement do their work. The Proud Boys are a neo-fascist group that gained notoriety during the debate when Trump was asked to denounce white supremacy. Sure, Are you I'm prepared willing to, to do specifically that, but do it? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and white like me to condemn? White proud boys. Boys. Ooh, and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. Many consider the Proud Boys a hate group. Its members marched at the Unite the Right rally in 2017 in Charlottesville, Virginia, and more recently have marched against Black Lives Matter protests. On social media, the group has taken the president's statement as marching orders. Standing by, sir, one member wrote. What we saw was a dog whistle through a bullhorn. Donald Trump is not pretending to be 
anything other than what he is, someone who will not condemn white supremacists, someone who cannot say the phrase Black Lives Matter. And on Wednesday, at a campaign stop in Ohio, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden sent this message. My message to the Proud Boys and every other white supremacist group is cease and desist. That's not who we are. The White House is defending Trump. It notes last week he declared the KKK a terrorist organization and lynching a hate crime. They charge that Biden has failed to denounce the actions of Antifa, a coalition of left-wing activists. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. For a nation embroiled in ongoing social unrest, the exchange has only added to the unease felt by many Americans. With the U.S. election now less than five weeks away, both candidates hit the campaign trail to play up their strengths and downplay the blunders of the first presidential debate. This is what a nation looks like when they tell God they no longer want or need him. Since America will not recognize God as the creator of all things, follow his commandments and give him the glory that only he deserves, he has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 says, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evildoers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 115. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. The United States is divided on just about every issue. Race, gay marriage, transgenderism, abortion, and the list goes on. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation as we read in Matthew 12:25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. My question is this. With everything that is happening in the U.S. right now, are we witnessing the desolation of America? One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death 
but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.